and software might trigger a sales process recording revenue at the point in time the invoice happens but note that that really if they're shipping goods the revenue should be recorded at the point in time that the shipment happens or when some type of delivery happens whether it be fob shipping or fob destination so we're going to have to be looking at the relationship between these types of items and when the system the accounting software is recording the revenue uh, with relation to them and see if there's any kind of timing difference issues that we need to consider then we have the sales journal after a sales invoice has been issued the sales need to be recorded in the accounting records the sales journal is used to record information about the sales transactions so the sales journal will be a specialized journal that's just going to show the basically the sales type of reports this might be a report that we'll have to print out if we're using accounting software we might have to ask for basically a sales journal a sales report the names can differ note that when we go to different types of industries different types of companies they may have different names the accounting software may generate reports in different types of formats so we need to understand you know what the general name is of the report and what it is that we're looking for on it so that when we get the report we could recognize that we have indeed gotten the information that we need if it, even if it's not by the same name then we have the customer statement mailed to the customers has details of all sales cash receipts and credit memorandum memorandum transactions accounts receivable subsidiary ledger this is obviously going to be really important when we consider the sales process and consider uh, the auditing of accounts receivable itself has an account and detail of transactions for each customer so the subsidiary ledger remember we, when we think about accounts receivable of course we've got accounts receivable representing what is owed to the company by customers we then break that out by not just the gl by date as all accounts are broken out on the general ledger by date but also by subsidiary ledger so the subsidiary ledger breaking it out by customer so now we have the same detail broken out by customer that's going to be important of course for accounts receivable accounts receivable aging uh, report summarizes all customer balances in accounts receivable subsidiary ledger each account is classified as either current or placed into one of several past due categories so this is a similar type of process the on the on the on the balance sheet we got accounts receivable that represents what is owed to the company by customers then we're going to break that out by by customer subsidiary ledger but also an aging report subsidiary ledger type report which will break out who owes us the money but also break it out by how old that money is or how past due it is is it current is it 30 days past due is it 90 days past due that'll help us to value the accounts receivable and see if the collections are actually happening in a timely manner with regard to the sales on account remittance advice part of the customer's bill that is returned with the payment so when we think about the remittance when we, you receive a bill like a utility bill in the mail or something like that that little slip that you're supposed to fill out the amount and then send it back that's going to be important within the return internal controls process because when that goes back to the system that remittance you can have a check in the envelope you can have the remittance that will then come back and those two things will typically be recorded and go to different departments and be recorded as as a form of check and balance so when we're testing the internal controls that's so going to be an important document cash receipts journal used to record the cash receipt of the entity so we'll have the cash receipts journal again with an accounting software it might be that we're going to be asking for some type of report with relation to the cash receipts journal which may not be named exactly the cash receipts journal but obviously we're looking for a report that has cash receipts on it credit memorandum used to record the return of goods by customers so this is going to be important for the recording of revenue as well because the credit memorandum which is usually something that many times within even the accounting process if you ask the the bookkeeper or the people in the accounting department what what's the journal entry behind a credit memorandum they don't really know right they it's obviously because it's it's backwards it reverses the sales so we have to understand that the credit memorandum is typically going to be the the reversal there's going to be some type of return uh and therefore it's the easiest way to think about it the transaction related to it is going to think about the sales transaction that will typically be reversed and then make any kind of adjustments such as sales uh, instead of sales you've got uh, the sales returns and allowances so anyways the credit memorandum form can be a little bit uh confusing to analyze when you have those returns 
because most of the times when we think about accounting, we think about the sales process and the return uh, is a little bit backwards in our mind. So credit memorandum, we have the write off authorization authorizes the write off of an uncollected accounts receivable. Uh, final approval is often done by the treasurer.